Welcome to Lecture Online and to get a better feel of what we mean by the reaction order, let's do an example and after this example I think you'll have a better idea. All right, so let's say we have a real reaction. Take some hydrogen ions, some bromate ions, some bromine ions, and they react. They form bromine and water. So that's in an, an aqueous solution. It's probably acidic because they have a lot of H plus in there. And uh, so let's say that experimentally we determined the reaction rate. The rate of the reaction is equal to the constant K, which is called the, react uh, the reactant constant or reaction constant. Uh, we have the concentration of the bromine ion, the bromate ion, and the hydrogen ion, but that's the second order there. So the total order of this reaction is the fourth order. 1 plus 1 plus 2 is 4. But what's important is the, that the uh, relationship between the rate and the concentration of each of the ions. It's linearly, uh, it's linearly related to the bromine ion. It's linearly, linearly, wow, that's a tough thing to say, isn't it? Linearly related to the bromate ion, and it's related to the hydrogen ion concentration squared. So if you double the hydrogen uh, concentration, you quadruple the reaction. All right, so what happens when we do these three things? First of all, what happens when we triple the concentration of the bromate ion. Well, since the reaction is linear, linearly related to the concentration of the bromate ion, if you then triple the concentration, you therefore triple the reaction, of course, assuming that everything else is left the same. So for part A, that simply means we therefore triple the reaction. And another way to look at that is to say, well, if the order is one for the bromate ion, then if I double the concentration, I double the reaction. If I triple the concentration, I triple the reaction, so forth. There's that linear relationship. And uh, therefore, if we triple it, then we triple the reaction. All right, what about part B? Here we're going to change the pH of the solution from 3 to 4. So it's still acidic, but it's less acidic. Now going from 3 to 4, that means that we reduce the concentration of the hydrogen ion by a factor of 10. So that means that the concentration of the hydrogen ion, uh, the, the, the new concentration is equal to one-tenth the original concentration. That's what happens when we increase the pH by one number from three to four. That simply means we now have only 10% or one-tenth the hydrogen ions in the solution that we had before when the pH was three. All right, since the reaction rate is proportional to the concentration squared, and if we go to one-tenth the original concentration, that means the reaction rate is one-tenth squared. So therefore, we can say the new rate is equal to one-tenth squared times the old rate, which means it's one over 100 times the old rate. So by increasing the pH by one point, going from three to four, the concentration changes to one-tenth the original concentration for the hydrogen ion. That means the reaction rate is now one one-hundred. We take that one-tenth squared because the hydrogen ion concentration has order of two. And finally, going to part C, let's say now that the solution is diluted to one-quarter its original concentration. All right, if we dilute, oh, and by the way, we keep the pH the same. So we, we put a buffer in it, we keep the pH the same, but we're we're reducing the solution to one quarter its original concentration, which means that both the bromine ion and the bromate ion both reduce in concentration by a factor four. But since the rate is the product of the concentrations, we could then say that the new rate, the new rate is equal to one quarter times one quarter. We have to account for each of the changes. One quarter for bromine ion, one quarter for bromate ion. So now the reaction rate will be 1 16th the old, the old rate or the original rate of reaction. All right, that should make it a lot clearer when we talk about the reaction order. It really is the number that 
that controls the rate of the reaction and it's really dependent upon how the rate of reaction is associated with the concentration of the ions in the solution and, and with the order of that concentration. So if it's second order, of course, then we have to take whatever the change in the concentration is and square that. If it happened to be the third order, we take whatever the change in concentration is and cube that number to find the new rate. So that's how we do that. Now you know what we mean by reaction order and how to use it. And we'll, we'll, say, we'll have a few more examples like that to make it a little bit easier to understand.